Welcome back to the channel guys and in today's video it's like Christmas in summer. Hi guys, welcome back. Super, super exciting video today. Got a lot of stuff to show you guys. First, I gotta start with a little bit of bad news. I did hear back from TRA. Uh, they called me about the TK specifically. Uh, they still haven't done anything with the transmission. They haven't even opened it up. But the TKs was nothing but bad news. So even though the TKs wasn't making any noise and everything seemed to be fine with it, it was actually completely busted. It was a complete shit show. So uh, John Ripple from TRE calls me and I'm super excited because finally I'm hearing back from these guys. So it turns out that the TKs had an open diff. So an open differential from like an older car. So, the, but the Evo 9 specifically did have ACD and it did have a limited slip differential in the, in the transfer case from the factory. Well, my transfer case did not have that. It just had an open differential. So. Boom, automatically, I need a differential. Then it also turns out that the, uh, I believe he said it was the ring and pinion were actually cracked. So those are parts that are not available from the factory anymore. Of course, there's billet parts available or stronger parts available, but they cost more. So boom, there goes another thousand dollars. So basically I had the, the, the normal rebuild, which is a little bit over $800, plus the added expense of the differential, having to buy the differential and the added expense of having to replace the ring and pinion. So really bittersweet because I'm really, really happy that I just decided to just, you know what, since I'm there, the TKs is out, might as well just send it, you know? Uh, I thought that they, it was just gonna be like a, a regular rebuild for, you know, call it $900, maybe $1,000 with shipping and all that stuff back. But ultimately, you know, hearing the bad news, at least I'm glad that I didn't get this thing out to the track and find out that way. So, you know, bittersweet and it is what it is. You guys know how things go with, with these Eagles, man, especially buying an Eagle that was kind of, kind of abandoned. It is what it is. I got to fix it and it sucks for me, but positive is I'm going to have a badass TK. case. All right, but enough with the bad news. Let's move on to all this cool stuff. So let's start with the brakes. So I ended up having to get different front calipers. Okay. Because those calipers were unusable. You guys see in these pictures, this back thread here, the thread on the, on the bolt hole was completely busted. Okay. It wasn't, well, not completely, but it was busted, busted enough that I didn't feel comfortable using. So I had to send those guys, those back to the guy. So I ended up having to source these guys and bring them down to my powder coater. So these got fully rebuilt, all new seals and stuff like that. I had to get new lines, new bleeders. Uh, they're fully, fully rebuilt. Now, why did I go black? It's basically because this is the only color that I think that may not change with the heat of the using the brakes and the track. Now, full disclosure, these are stickers. Uh, he could have baked these on. Um, he actually can do them in powder, but you know, it was a lot more, more expense. So, you know, he put these on just for beauty pictures, but I'm probably just gonna take these off. Okay, I do, I do like the black and gray. Also full disclosure, I am not planning on murdering this thing out. It's just kind of the way things work out. I just think black is just not gonna change colors with track use. These are actually modified stock heat shields. Okay, so I told you guys that I was going to try to modify this and this is kind of what I came up with. You know, maintains the factory mounting locations, okay. I left this part here to protect the ball joint, all right, and a little bit here to protect the ABS sensor. And I just gave it a few coats of uh, an epoxy paint. So we'll see how that works. Moving on, I got these parts from a guy on Facebook or Instagram. He's actually making these upgraded air guides. That's supposed to catch air from like this area and then direct it to this area, okay? Into the caliper, into the, in between the caliper and into the rotor. So these is basically just a bigger and stronger because the factory parts are plastic. The bracket is metal, but the guide itself is plastic. So these are obviously aluminum. Nothing super fancy here, but he was really nice enough to send them to me uh, to try them out. So I'll definitely keep you guys posted on these. As you guys saw on the last video that I pressed those uh, wheel studs in on that wheel bearing that is no longer there. That wheel bearing is busted, okay? And the other one is also aftermarket. So preemptive, uh, you don't mess around with wheel bearings. So I figured, you know, while I'm in there, 
I got two brand new stock wheel bearings. Obviously, I'm gonna have to press these out and press the new ARP studs in. All right, and all of this is the stuff that I sent to the, to the regular powder coater, okay? So this came out really, really nice. This is just a, a satin, and we did two coats of powder. Yeah, this stuff is looking super, super nice. Very, very glad. This wasn't that, that expensive to get done, so I'm very, very glad that I did. Everything looks super, super minty. Okay, and now the two mystery boxes. So this is the main part of the video, guys. Very excited about this, over this. Basically, as soon as I, I got the car, I already knew I wanted to do this. Real straight, thank you. First is a tomato part. What is this, a box inside of a box? Yep. Yeah. Infinite Evil, baby. Nice. You guys know what this is now. Infinite Evil oil pan. Of course, I had to do this again. This was one of my favorite things that I didn't get to really try on the gray car. Everything is super well packaged. Line comes pre-made. I know he made a revision to this line since I since I uh, use this. OEM parts were needed. Aside from a dry sump, I think this is probably the best oil pan that you could use for a 4G engine. And just as last time, we're using the Tomei crank scraper. There's three parts you get, okay? And then they also send you all your needed gaskets and stuff like that. All right guys, so since I still don't have transmission, I really don't wanna start mounting the subframe and all this stuff, because it's gonna be much, much easier to put the transmission and the transfer case up with that, all that stuff underneath. I am probably gonna end up doing it here in the garage. So on today's video, we're gonna go ahead and try to get the oil pan installed, okay, with the crank scraper and all that stuff. So let's get to work. Okay, so I had already done this um, this pan on the, on the gray car, and I did a little bit more of an explanation. Uh, so if you want to see that video, I'm going to put it right here. But I'll give you guys a quick rundown. So basically, what's special about this pan? Uh, yes, it has an extended capacity. Uh, I believe it increases the capacity by a little over a quart. Okay, but really the magic is that this pan relocates, eliminates the factory. Um, pressure relief valve from the oil, from the factory oil pump and replaces it with an adjustable one. And the fact that it's adjustable, it, it, it's nice, but it's not really what makes this pan that special either. Now uh, you see the factory pump dumps its, its uh, overpressure around this area, okay? And the pickup is over here in the front. So obviously when you're accelerating or you're turning high Gs or whatever, you don't want the oil the excess oil to be dumped behind the pickup okay this this kit has a provision for the regulator up front and there's a tube here so the return then gets rerouted from the factory location via this line okay and this regulator and this special adapter this is the adapter that i'll show you guys in a little bit but this is basically what eliminates the factory pressure relief valve okay but then this dumps the excess oil up here up front okay and i think that that's the big key with this setup okay it has trap doors and there is some assembly required okay um i don't know if you guys can see there if you see here you see this little flapper okay so the pan has all these slots okay around 
for these flappers, okay? And you get them in this bag, okay? And they look, they look like this, okay? This guy goes. So now, before torquing all this, you're supposed to spin the engine. Close. Ooh, this rod is close. Yep, this one rod is very, very close. So we have to modify this or something. Well, this over here seems good. I think the only thing that I'm a little worried about is the plate that goes up. All right, guys, so this is the plate in question. So this plate basically bolts like this, okay? And it goes up into the engine cavity, and it sits like this. And the crank is rotating this way. I don't know if it rotates this way or this way, whatever. But the rods kind of fall in between here, okay? But, so this is, we don't have enough clearance here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my little, uh, my little grinding sander wheel, okay? And I'm gonna open these up some more. I don't think I need more clearance at the bottom, I just need more clearance here on the sides. So let me show you what's happening with the actual engine. So this is the plate, okay, that goes up that I showed you guys on the bench. And if you see, it's hard to see from here, but you see how the rod kind of goes into that slot? Okay, it doesn't really go in there, in there, but it's very close, you see that? And I already clearanced it. It's pretty tight still, so. And the rods, although the rods are not supposed to like move, right? But they, they do have a little bit of clearance side to side on the crank. So you have to account for that. So uh, I already did two revisions on this. So I think I'm gonna pull it out one more time. This one here has plenty of clearance already. I think I'm gonna pull this one out and give it just a little bit more clearance on the other side, just so that if this doesn't fall dead nuts, this also has a little bit of play. <laughs> You know, so you just gotta be careful with that, especially if you have aftermarket rods and you're putting one of these. Okay, so I modified the upper piece. I confirmed that everything uh, everything has plenty of clearance. Okay, so now it's time to go ahead and uh, torque all this stuff to spec. Okay, so I got all my little trap doors installed in there. And again, you know, if you, if you look, so it's a simple, simple solution. So I already went ahead and uh, cleaned the whole inside. Whenever you get an oil pan or anything that's gonna go inside the engine, you wanna make sure that it's 100% clean. So I went ahead and I cleaned this thoroughly with the uh, brake cleaner. And then I also blew it with um, some compressed air. And I'm glad I did because a couple little metal shavings go out. I'm sure that Mike uh, is, he does a very, very thorough job and he doesn't want any of this. He doesn't want any dirt to stay in there and i'm sure he cleans it a lot himself too but you know things happen in transportation and things like that so you just want to make sure you clean it uh, very very thoroughly before putting it on so now i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to wipe my flange one more time this pan is made with a stock oil pan okay so this is a stock flange okay so we're going to follow basically the stock procedure for our rtv okay and i like to use the ultra black rtv all right, and oh, there goes every GoPro. So with this, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to install it, okay, with whatever size, whatever, whatever. Then you're supposed to just hand tighten it, finger tighten it until material begins to squeeze out of the flange. Then you let it dry for one hour and then torque to spec, okay? So whenever you do an oil pan, do not, do not, or anything that has a lot of oil or anything like that. If you want this stuff to really, really seal, just follow the instructions, guys, okay? So that's exactly what I'm gonna do.
make a video of just like my faces when I'm wrenching on things. Okay, now we set a one hour timer. Set a one hour timer. One hour, starting now. All right, so one hour passed. So let's torque these guys. All right. She's all the way in. Hopefully, knock on wood, no leaks. make the same mistake that I made before uh, this line can't run over the top of this line here okay because then the oil filter won't fit this is pretty tight already here so you got to run it along the inside okay of the regulator line all right guys so that's gonna wrap it up for this video I think we're out of time so on the next video uh, hopefully we're gonna start putting on the brakes We'll deal with the new uh, wheel bearings, probably put the ACD pump uh, back in the car, put all the stuff on the front subframe, put the subframe to the side, and if we have time, maybe we get into this other big box that just showed up. Until then, guys, catch you on the next one. Peace.